All right, today I'm going to go over the changes I've made to this machine briefly. This won't be a long video, but it's going to bring you up to date on what we've got going on. The first change that I made, which is the biggest one, was I changed out the motor that was attached here. This motor connects to a shaft, or did, that ran over here to this box. I'm going to move this angle up and down here. So that controlled the angle of the, the stone. So that created a problem. It was one variable, so I replaced that whole system with a digital protractor. You see this gives a readout here. This is 58.95, 58 58.9, it's going back and forth. So it's pretty pretty close in terms of accuracy. There is still a little bit of, of slop in the machine, uh, and I've just had to work around that. But this actually has enabled me to get a much better polish on this stone, which is a lab-created corundum, and uh, so that's that's a major improvement. The other change I did was I removed a section of the drip pan here, and I installed a floppy piece of silicone here, which I hold in place. But that allows me to get my eye level down, even with a lap, so that I can check how well the stone is resting on the lap. Another change was I replaced this coupling here which attaches the DOP arm to the index motor. Previously I was using one of these. These are inexpensive little couplings. Uh, you can get them at hardware stores or on Amazon. And the problem is that it just uses set screws on both sides. And so unless you tighten these set screws down perfectly, then it can be a little bit off kilter. This one does also use set screws, but it's specifically designed to use in a CNC mill. This would be what holds your cutting bit. So this is a quarter inch concentric collar here on this end. So it tightens evenly in all directions around the top. And then it's specifically designed to go into a five millimeter motor shaft on that end as two set screws. And it eliminated the wobble. Previously, I had almost a half a millimeter of wobble at the tip of the stone where it was orbiting in, an, in a slight ellipse when the index was rotating. And now I've got that down to quite a bit less here. I'll show you the stone here. Let me rotate it up so we can see it here. Focus, there we go. So here is this stone here, which I've got cut. Let's see if I can put a picture up here on the screen. That's better. So it's doing a lot better. And uh, me and Corundum, this is pretty difficult to get a polish on. So I'm going to take this stone out because the bottom is done. I need to cut the top and we'll go on from there. The last thing I've done is put a washer on the top because this right here, which does have a nut uh, embedded on the inside of this, this is a hand adapter but i put a washer here and then a washer on the bottom and i'm probably going to upgrade both of those to maybe two inch washers and that has really helped eliminate a lot of the wheel wobble uh, that i had before because i was getting a fair amount of wobble at the edge of the wheel or run out if you prefer that term so by sandwiching the laps between two flat washers uh, that has made a big difference so that's all for the update for now i'm going to uh, put up some footage here of the machine in action and some pictures of the stone being cut and we'll go from there. So I'm running a program right now where it's cutting pavilions and it's cut five of them right here. So we're going to go ahead and turn off the drip here. Turn off the motor. And what I'm going, to, I'm going to go ahead and pause this here, put the phone in a different position. All right, so I have these two little nuts that I use to grab onto these bolts here. And I just take note of the measurement, 36.15. I'm going to loosen this up here. And that way I can rotate this up to see it. Let's see if we can zoom in on And as you can start to see here, 
This was a stone I had started to cut, so it's got some other facets in it, but you can start to see this star that's starting to form here. And that's where I'm going. This is a five-sided point, so we're going to cut this some more. We're going to do another round of cutting on it and see if we can get some more defined uh, hewlett facets on this. So here I made it a little easier to see what I'm doing. I put Sharpie on the stone before I cut it. So now you can see all the facets starting to form a meat ear and a five-sided point. So I want it to be more pronounced, so I'm gonna do some more cutting here. And let these go a little deeper. So now that I've got it uh, mains cut the way I want them, I'm gonna run a quick program to change the index by 20 steps so that I can run uh, the next set of brake facets. So I just press this here. And it says finish, do not cycle, because if I finished it again, it'd run 20 more steps. And here we are after that round of cutting. You can see you've got a pretty nice looking star shape here. So I'm going to do a little bit more work on this and keep going. All right, we're gonna move on to doing the pre-polish now. So I've got a 14K lap. We're coming off of a 1200 lap, and so hopefully these facets will be small enough that they'll polish quickly. We are going to run the same program we did to cut the the, the different uh, facets to, to polish them because it'll line up. So first thing I always do is turn on the drip. The program will lift the stone up, rotate the index back and forth, and then put the stone back down. Now I'll go ahead and turn on the lap. I like to run this lap around six or 700 RPMs. This is synthetic uh, corundum, so it needs to be running pretty fast. Let's run that a couple times, see how it goes. So here's the pavilion on this stone. I uh, still got some work I got to do on it, and part of that is because I'm going from a 1200 to a 14k polishing or pre-polishing lap, and this being corundum, I really need to get an 8k. I don't have one, so I'm going to get one. Uh, so that future stones can eliminate. You can see most of these facets are, are really nice and clean, but there's a few here. You can start to see these two coming up here. Those breaks still have the middle part of the facet that didn't cut. So I believe that by going to an 8K, I can eliminate that problem. But otherwise, uh, I'm quite happy with how this is coming out. Went out. See, it's got a nice crisp point at the top. We got, uh, it's hard to see here in this light, but we have a five-sided symmetry here for five mains. And then each break is split into three and they're pretty consistent. And then I have some edge facets that I added in here just to round out the stone, uh, mostly because I wanted to experiment with how quickly it would cut smaller facets. And so I've been just, this is just a zone I've been playing around with. So. Anywho, thanks for watching. I'm going to post another video once I get the, the stone finished cut when I cut the crown, but for now I just need to transfer it over and reload the uh, machine and program the crown cutting, which will be very similar to the pavilion with just a few changes to the uh, facet angles and the length of time it takes to cut each facet.